As a Christian entrepreneur, businessman, musician, YouTuber, do you ever find a struggle or a tension between the two things? Between playing the game and making money to an extent and doing the marketing and selling and all of that, and then also sticking to your your values and principles, morals? Are there what are some of the challenges? that you see there? What are some of the things that you, you've struggled with? I think the temptation to feed the algorithm mm -hmm. over and over. I think if you want to get pop in as a Christian creator, as a Christian content creator, you, 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 to, as fast as possible, you're probably going to do it on the back of dunking on uh, celebrity pastors, mm -hmm. mega church pastors, mm -hmm. or dunking on, oh my gosh, look at how crazy this lib is, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and it's and, and again, there's a time and a place for that. Yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not dismissing everyone that makes content like yeah. that. But I think the temptation and and was and sometimes is is to just keep repackaging that mm -hmm. same video because you know people want red meat. It works. And you know you people want to be, you know, um they want to point out the other and feel like they're right. Yes. And I think that that becomes a thing. So I had to make a very uh, intentional effort to like, okay, we're not going to do any more like celebrity pastor call out videos. Okay. It's just, it's just unhelpful, right? Because I'd rather have conversations. I'd rather make videos that are net positive, meaning that instead of saying, this pastor's so stupid, look at him, he did X, Y, and Z. Hey, um, let's find something that could reel in a non Christian. And how do we reel in a non Christian? Well, we, we, we talk about something they care about. So if, uh, like we had a video that's doing well right now, it's, um, Joe Rogan seeing that aliens are not extraterrestrial, that they're interdimensional, mm. and that it's quoted in Ezekiel. So I, I juxtapose Joe Rogan saying this to a video we just did of a different Christian saying, hey, aliens are not extraterrestrial, they're interdimensional, which means that the Bible is right, mm -hmm. that, that they've always been here, and that they're not breaking this th multiple laws of physics to come here from another universe or another galaxy, they're actually demons, fallen what, demons. What does it say in Ezekiel? Ezekiel I don't that. remember the exact passage, okay, okay. but he's reading Ezekiel on his podcast. Oh, okay. So, so, so what I'm so what I'm doing is instead of saying, um, "Hey, this celebrity pastor is bad," or <laughs> "Hey, this guy, this nobody's talking about. He's so stupid. Joe Rogan is mm. no bit of Bible stupid, right?" Yeah. So do not say, "Hey, look, look, he's saying something right. This is good." Mm. Like Joe Rogan, you're getting it. This is great, and I we call that net positive content. Oh, I like right? that term. How can I find some? Uh, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, Joe Rogan, Kanye, whoever, you fill in a blank. How can we find something that they're doing that's good yeah. and we celebrate the good when they're saying something right instead of saying, you're stupid, you're bad, you're an idiot, you're a liptard, yep. or whatever, right? So that's that's the temptation mm -hmm. that we've had to overcome. We've really, really made it. We still do it. So I'm not going to say like we're perfect in it. Sometimes it's just Aiden Ross getting finessed by uh, Playboy Cardi for a million dollars. That's mm -hmm. just funny. And he's an <laughs> idiot for that. And we're going to laugh about that, right? But generally speaking, that is what we're trying to lean into. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand because it's. Um, I think over the past five years, in particular, and I assume you've you've seen this as well. Is you see the power, the danger, and the risk of audience capture mm -hmm. and of becoming a slave to the algorithm. I've seen many, many a person fall into this, mm -hmm. and I can see why they're doing what they're doing. This is not unique to YouTube, by the way. This is true of uh, X, the yeah. app formerly known as Twitter. It's true of Instagram, whatever, because once something starts working, you can double, triple, and quadruple down on that. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the dangers with it as well is just due to the, what's the right term? Due to the proportionality of views or impressions or whatever it is, is you can have someone who... 90% of your content is type A, mm -hmm. and then the type B, which is only 10%, makes up 90% of the views. Mm -hmm. So now everyone knows you for the type B content, even though 90% of your stuff mm -hmm. is type A. And a lot of people are just like, okay, if people want type B, let's just let's just keep doing that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know people who have even just come off social media and stopped doing that because they're just like, man... I'm tired of this. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm here trying to put out stuff that's more positive or wholesome, but everyone just wants the red meat. Everyone just wants, you know, so and so destroys this, attacks this. If I look on my own YouTube channel, it's quite fascinating. I did this um, just recently because I was, I was like, what are my most popular videos? And I want to say about seven or eight out of my top twelve or fifteen videos 
are me criticizing the transgender agenda. Yeah. Like basically saying the same thing. I mean, on multiple, multiple platforms, but it's just like, okay. So if I talk about how goofy the idea that a man can just become a woman is, or that men are competing in female sports. And I'm just like, man, I'm, ma I've, I'm making music. I'm doing all these podcasts. I'm having all these interesting conversations. The, you, there's that frustration of like, why is this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why, why is this the thing that a million people yeah. want to watch? I've yeah. done, I've had so many more interesting conversations and mm -hmm. clips and creative pieces yeah. and whatever yeah. it is. And if I were just chasing the views, chasing the money, easiest thing to do would right. be like, let me just dunk right. on the left. Let me just dunk on the woke. Dunk on. It's not hard to do. Right. Like right. there's stupid stuff happening all, every, the, time. all the time, right? <laughs> it could just be like, I'll just chat on this one. Just, yeah. And it would be a very easy way to get views. Yeah. But then it's like, who am I helping with this? Yeah. What's yeah, well, it really I, doing? You know, I think there is a utility to you going on Pierce Morgan a little bit. Yeah. and saying, and just laying out a linear argument on Agreed. why some of the stuff from the leftist, pro progressive left that's kind of becoming more of the mainstream left is goofy. Mm. I think there's a utility to that. And I think I sometimes agree. people appreciate someone saying what they're feeling and thinking, but maybe they don't have the boldness to say, mm. and or creating something that's compassionate and gentle. It's not arrogant. And they can send to a friend and mm. be like, look, like Zuby lays this argument out better than I can. Mm. I think there's some utility to that. But to your point, if that's all people want, then I think what <laughs> happens is in the in the West, especially uh, in America, and, and this happens more so in Christian circles, is I think what happens is we slide into a, a, a type of Gnosticism and the Gnostics, two, two, two distinguishing ideas that they would hold to, which is knowledge and information is good. And that's the ultimate goal, like get as much knowledge and as much new stuff and as many new ideas and, and that sort of stuff. And the second is the spiritual is good, but the material is bad, mm -hmm. right? Your, your spirit, your, your, your spirit trapped inside a physical body. That's Gnosticism, okay. right? And so I think in, in my world, bro, Christians, unfortunately, just want more information and be told the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that's not faith. Like faith is placing your faith into practice. So if I'm just giving you the same information and I'm just preaching the gospel over and over to you, like, yes, that's important. We should preach the gospel. Or if I'm saying how bad the devil is and how bad the agenda is, like, yeah, we should be on alert and aware. Mm -hmm. But the, the information and inspiration should be causing implementation. Yes. And 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 that's the that's the the part where I think people aren't comfortable with is like, mm -hmm. hey, I kind of like my messy bed. You know, and it's just easier to complain about the other side and not yeah. really do anything. And I'm making it a point to not do that. Like, even, we're still doing interesting. We did a whole thing on on purpose and discovering God's purpose for your life, and we're still packaging it around interesting things. We did a video about um, Kevin Hart and and uh, his mom and his faith, and tying that into tying that into the concept of purpose broader. We're, we're trying to make videos that make people do something. Mm -hmm. Like we want you to do something. And and this is this is this doesn't serve me well. But if I think about my favorite creators, and again, this doesn't this isn't this doesn't serve me well as a, as a creator. But if I think about my favorite creators, the ones that had the most amount of impact in my life, I, I can I can think of two, maybe three. Number one would probably be Dave Ramsey, okay, because I got out of debt listening to his content. Number two would probably be Gary Vee because mm. he got me to create a content. And I'd say recently it's probably Alex Hermosi. Okay. None of their content is intended for me to listen to indefinitely. Right? Mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey is trying to get me to baby step one, get thousand dollar emergency fund, get on a budget, baby step two, snowball your debt, right? There's 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 a process to it. Gary Vee is trying to get me to document, not create, make mm -hmm. content. Alex Hermosi wants me to start a seven figure business and grow, right? You age out of their content. Yes. And you're supposed to. That doesn't serve them well as creators, mm -hmm. right? But that's that's the point. Like you're not supposed to listen to Dave Ramsey forever. Yeah. Because it's the same thing over and over it's again. It's like a personal trainer. It's like when you someone's been working with the same trainer for five years, and you come back five years later, they look exactly the same. Right. That's exactly a bad trainer. It's a bad trainer. Right. Like yeah. if, the, if you keep coming back to the trainer over and over again, either you're not listening and applying <laughs> the advice, or that's a bad trainer and wants you to stay there in their feedback loop. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that for people. I want to make on content art books that like empower people and then if i'm growing and i'm leveling up and i can help them keep leveling up then, yeah. then then praise god for that you know but i think that's the that's the tough part man it's like i don't think we need another self-help book 
necessarily. I don't think we need another conference. I don't think we need another motivational speech. I think we need to help people implement the information they already know. Most people know if you want to get in shape, man, eat less, work out more, <laughs> right? Now, we get to figure out how can we be creative in packaging that in a way mm -hmm. that they go, oh, Zuby laid it out this way in his book. It finally clicked for me, yeah. right? And I think that's that's that becomes the game, mm -hmm. is how can I sneak the medicine in with the candy in a way that actually compels someone to act? And if I actually give people the inspiration, information, and implementation to change their life, then I think the brand loyalty goes deeper than they just consume me all the time. Then the brand loyalty becomes when Ruslan drops a merch thing or when Ruslan comes out with a book or when Ruslan comes to my town, mm. I got to show up because he helped me change. The same way Dave Ramsey changed my life or helped me change my life, same way Gary Vee helped me change my life, that's deeper than like... I'm just going to brainlessly watch your content every mm -hmm. day.